my name is Taizo Son. Um, it is much, uh, first of all, it's, it's much honor to be here. Uh, let me start from my int self introduction and also the reason why I came here to Singapore. Um, so, my um, um, last two decades, uh, I'm as a serial entrepreneur. I've engaged in the uh, uh, internet industry uh, for 20 years. And uh, especially uh, one of my, uh, the brightest uh, startup I found, which I found is the, the company called Gangho, which, is, which provides the online gaming uh, uh, services uh, the globally. And uh, uh, the, the market cap is about uh, uh, 4 billion uh, or something like that. But um, as you might know, uh, my brother is a master son, uh, the founder of the SoftBank and also the biggest shareholder of the Alibaba. And um, let me introduce uh, why, uh, when I, uh, and when and why I started uh, career, uh, first career as an entrepreneur. Uh, the, in 1995, uh, I just met uh, the Jerian, uh, the founder of the Yahoo, as you know. And at the time, he was uh, 26 years old, and I was 23, uh, two to three. And both two of us uh, are very young, and uh, they are the, uh, he is a stand, uh, student of the Stanford University. And he just started Yahoo at the time, and the uh, number of the employees only uh, 15 people or something like that. And he uh, visited Japan, and he, uh, he told us that he liked to uh, start uh, the Japanese version of the Yahoo. And uh, I was uh, heavily involved in uh, uh, the internet uh, uh, while I was in uh, Tokyo University. So uh, I was so excited uh, to be the part of the launching the Yahoo Japan. So uh, with my friends, uh, I, 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 st uh, I started give, giving a helping hand to launch Yahoo Japan uh, as a founding member. And uh, I was a project leader of the system development in the search engine and database and so on. And uh, this, uh, the center is me. Uh, I had more hair than today. <laughs> um, the, anyway, um, for the last uh, 20 years, uh, I was involved in uh, those companies. Uh, some of them uh, I founded by myself uh, as a founder. And also, uh, there are some other uh, American company or the Chinese company uh, uh, the f which uh, enter into the Japan Japanese market or the uh, other a Asian market, and uh, I, I was involved in uh, uh, the, one of the founding member, launching member of the project, and uh, so um, uh, my only confidence uh, as an uh, entrepreneur uh, is that uh, I could I have experienced a lot of the uh, failures launching uh, the business, and also sometimes uh, the very few, less than 5% in my gut feeling, uh, I just made uh, some success, but uh, most of the cases I failed. But I, I, I have a confidence that I failed and I learned a lot from the failures. So, um, so like that, uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a person like, like this, but uh, um, Mr. Zhou is my latest uh, startup for me. And um, the Mr. Zhou is uh, not just a, st a startup company, but uh, we call ourselves the collective impact community to empower startups and innovators to create a more human centered and sustainable future through technology. So, uh, which means, um, so we are kind of partly uh, the incubator, we are partly venture capital, and we are partly that. The, the growth accelerator and so on, but not only that, uh, we not providing the money or the human resources or the, some excellency from through the lessons learned, but also um, uh, we will sometimes we will uh, jointly develop the the best best technology from scratch with the talented engineers or the scientists, or uh, sometimes we will uh, uh, provide uh, some uh, global network. To, to grow faster uh, and so on. So, um, so our mission is uh, that we like to make us the world better. We like to change the world better. So that social change is our key concept through entrepreneurship. So um, 
supporting the entrepreneurs, encouraging the talented engineers or the designers and so on, innovators, then uh, I believe that we can change the world better. So uh, uh, we, we, we will definitely support by all means to, uh, for the entrepreneurs uh, to, to, uh, uh, to make, it, make something happen. And also another uh, principle is that, uh, that we are th always thinking of the orchestrate innovations. As you know, that each startup which has the amazing te new technologies, uh, sometimes they can make the great innovations in certain area. But because they, they are laser focusing on the one certain uh, industry or the some certain area, so that's why uh, their innovate, innovation is, uh, will be the limited. So um, uh, my, our mission is uh, that we, we, like to, uh, we like to make a big collective impact to the world, so uh, we will integrate those innovations into single or collective impact uh, so that uh, we can change the world better. And also, um, the, we are living uh, why uh, we live happily. So uh, human-centered design is also our, another key phrase, uh, key concept for me. Uh, and so uh, 20, in 20th century, uh, the people are focusing on too much about uh, economic growth. But sometimes that economic, too much economic growth uh, sometimes happens uh, that creates a side effects, which is not good. So um, uh, we should think the, uh, the carefully that uh, not only the making uh, great innovations and not only the uh, economic growth, but also uh, sustainability or the human-centered uh, design is also very important. So, um, uh, so I'm doing uh, this kind of thing, but. Uh, I, I, I know, I'm sure that, that this is too abstract for you guys to understand what, what, what kind of things I'm doing. So I will show some examples we are supporting and, uh, and show you that some uh, that, uh, in very interesting, exciting future figure of the, uh, our world. Uh, I'm going to show you this interesting slide. This is a 1900 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Easter morning, uh, Fifth Avenue, New York City. Uh, so there are a bunch of uh, coaches uh, running around, but only one automobile is here. As you know, the Ford T-Type, which is a hundred, more than 100 years ago. And this is uh, 1913, uh, the same day in the Fifth Avenue. And then all the uh, transportation changed to the automotives. And there's only one coach there. Uh, you know, even today, then in New York City, uh, the coaches are they're running, but uh, so you know the automotives are uh, running around. So just, just 13 years, it spent just 13 years to change like this. So uh, we can learn through this, uh, those, these two slides that uh, uh, sometimes once in a hundred years or the twice in a hundred years, uh, we will experience this kind of drastic change within a very short period of time uh, if uh, someone invent the very, very uh, innovative technology. So this time, uh, automotive technology was that, right? So as you know, in these days, um, you know, autonomous, autonomous vehicle, uh, in other words, uh, drive, driverless cars, uh, self-driving cars, technology is now popping up. So um, I'm, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, one interesting uh, com company, that the company called Zoot. Uh, they are developing um, level four autonomous people. Uh, level four means, uh, you know, today's Tesla is a level two. So in highway, uh, we can, we, we can uh, the Tesla Model S or X can drive by themselves without any driving, uh, controlling. But uh, it has, still it has the handles or the accelerators or the brakes, right? But level four, there's no handle or brakes and, and the accelerators at all. So uh, just sitting and tail, uh, I like to go there or somewhere. And uh, according to them, uh, uh, within a couple of years, they will be uh, commercialized uh, in the world. 
and uh, they are making amazing things. I just, I just experienced uh, riding this, and it was, even today, uh, almost perfect in my gut feeling, in my impression. But still, they are uh, the, uh, la uh, training the AI, artificial intelligence, about uh, autonomous vehicle, and, uh, which is amazing. So, and also, not only that kind of technology, um, <clears throat> You know, uh, this company is called uh, Starship Technology from the Estonia, and they are developing uh, uh, the local delivery robot. Uh, so it, it, this is also the autonomous. And, uh, it, you know, this, it, it will this de deliver the packets to everywhere in the, in the city in, or even the rural area. And according to them, uh, the, just the logistic cost is really cheap, uh, less than a couple of dollars. So, uh, and also um, this kind of thing can, of course, uh, they don't claim uh, at all. So they don't form a, a labor union. So uh, 24 hours, uh, 365 days, they can walk nicely. So, um, and also uh, I'm gonna show you another one. Uh, this is uh, 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 Japanese young entrepreneurs. They are developing uh, the personal mobility like this. sensors and also the machine learning features so uh, that detects the different uh, the change shift of the body balance or the accelerator gyros GPS and so on and uh, and they, that car will learn the driver's uh, behavior the habits so all we need to drive this car is just thinking I like to go this way or I like to go that way and then uh, slightly the change of the weight right and then it, they, uh, that car detects the, uh, the change of the balance, and then uh, they gradually control the speed or, and so on. And they have, they have invented the very interesting uh, the in-wheel motor. Motor is inside the wheel, and there's no gears or drive shaft at all. So just a, and no steering. And so just a difference of the rotation of the left and right, and then uh, they can turn left and right. So this is very amazing and simple and very reasonable. So according to them, uh, if we start this kind of device, portable uh, automotive device, personal mobility device, and then um, our mindset of the walking distance will be changed totally. So uh, it will not just a convenient hobby for gadget for the young young teenagers, but uh, uh, it will uh, change the des design of the city or the layout or the uh, the uh, allocation of the uh, the facilities or the design of the even the building inside the building will be changed. So. Um, Combining those kind of new technologies, ah, and also, I forgot, I, another one, uh, last one. This, the, this guy is developing an autonomous unmanned aerial vehicle, uh, kind of a drone. And they have uh, dispatched in Rwanda, Africa, to carry the bloods or the vaccines uh, to the hospitals in, um, for the emergency oh. purpose. Flies automatically out to the so, clinic. Uh, typically, uh, the Amazon or Google or the any other guys are uh, developing drones in these days. But uh, according to them, the distance uh, in one time for per charge is just a five kilometers or six kilometers. But they can fly uh, more than hundred kilometers in one time because uh, it has an amazing AI and it will detect the wind. And if they catch the wind and stop the propeller and then the, the flying like a bird or the glider, and then uh, to, so that uh, they can save the battery. So that's why uh, they can uh, fly the more than 100 kilometers in one time. 
And the, uh, they just started uh, with the Bill and Melinda Foundation or the United Nations organizations. And uh, they started uh, the official, the first in the world, official uh, ambulance drone uh, in the world. So if we look at those kind of the new technologies, I I'm sure that we can change the design of the cities from scratch to, so that we can uh, take advantage of the, those potentials of the new technologies. So, you know, so uh, from car-centric city to the human-centric city. So that's my keyword, key phrase. So, you know, today's city design is based on the car, uh, based on the today's transportation technology. For example, uh, the, if you look at the Manhattan, New York, or the Dallas, or the Miami, or the somewhere, uh, which built in the 20th century, then, uh, the, you know, the city design is based on the uh, transport and some technology in 20th century, like uh, trains or the uh, cars and so on. So the Grand Central, uh, Grand Central Station is located in the center of the city, and then the grid of the car roads uh, are located. So then the blocks uh, of the each, uh, each block is uh, bigger. And uh, in Tokyo, uh, for example, the, we, there are so many pedestrian bridges uh, over, the, over the road. So it's car-centric from my perspective because the human, human beings, people have to climb up the bridge and go down the bridge to, to cross the road, right? So it's a car-centric. So, if we are uh, utilizing the, those new technologies in 20th cent 21st century, I think we can, we can change uh, the new uh, city design uh, radically to, to make uh, us uh, live happily. So, um, um, and also, uh, you know, this, there are so many uh, phrases called the smart grid. But in my, uh, in my opinion, the off-grid is the next generation. You know, the, uh, Elon Musk has announced uh, uh, the, the solar city, uh, called it's a solar energy service uh, on the rooftop, right? Which is uh, the compar comparably reasonable than the uh, uh, traditional roof roofs. So, but also the, it generates the electricity, so uh, it's there's no reason to shift, uh, there's no reason to stay uh, uh, to the traditional roof. Okay, and also um, this, uh, this guy is also uh, our incubator, and they are developing a water recycling system. With, this is a prototype, but with this, uh, we can utilize the water uh, sem semi-permanently. So according to them, uh, the, if the four, four family members uh, keep on using and taking a shower in one month, uh, they, they need uh, more than 1,600 liters to take a shower for the four people. But with this, just 20 liter water is good enough to, to take a shower forever. So it, it reduces uh, the water consumption and also the, we can be the totally off-grid. Uh, we can separate from the grid. So this is uh, the, the final design of this. So like the battery or the like uh, servers of the computers, uh, we can attach, uh, we can add the units uh, based on the consumption uh, or the capacity and so on. So and then uh, we, I think we can, uh, we can to be totally free uh, for the, for, especially for the city design layout. And also, uh, I think uh, we should uh, redesign the working space or the way of the working. Um, you, you know that today's office is like this, right? Uh, just for concentrating into the working something, right? But in my opinion, uh, the new office will be like that because you know the virtual reality or the video conferencing technology will be more sophisticated and easy to use. And then we don't have, we have no reason to face-to-face uh, -face meeting, to do the face-to-face -face meeting. But on the other hand, um, in order to get the serendipity, uh, we, we cannot get the serendipity through the VR Google, right? So uh, we need a real space. 
So, and also that for the creative people, uh, the serendipity is one of the key elements uh, of the uh, create a great new, very innovative things. So, um, the new generation of the office will be the kind of the, this kind of meetup space, not the working space, to, to create the serendipity. So, um, yeah, anyway, and, and also uh, the time is up. So, uh, the, from the cure, med medical cure to the preventive, preventive medicine, so this guy is developing the deep learning technology uh, to detect uh, the very small cancer cell. And also that this lady, young, young entrepreneur, is developing the urine monitoring system. Uh, that from urine, uh, they can detect uh, the various kind of the disease symptom. So, um, and even the education will be changed to the self-directed learning. We don't need a school anymore, in my opinion. So we just, I just started just last month that in t Tokyo that uh, uh, I, I think, uh, as far as I know, uh, this is the first seed accelerator for the kids. And we just uh, providing uh, a fab, fab lab uh, space, fabrication space for the kids, totally for free. And the children are coming and they make a pitch to us. And uh, we have assigned the experts of the engineering, hardware engineering, software engineering, UI design, and so on. And they will uh, make uh, the children's idea to, uh, to realize and commercialize. And I, I, we, we will just sell, uh, distribute as a commercial project, uh, product uh, designed by the children. And then uh, if it, it sells well, then we, we will pay the royalty to the kids. So um, instead of the teaching, uh, providing the environment to, for the, uh, so that children will self-directed learning, right? So that will be the future figure of the schools. So uh, anyway, um, I was keep on looking at uh, the cutting edge technologies all over the world. And then um, I came to know that uh, uh, so we need uh, uh, another uh, new design from scratch to create uh, te base utilizing the new technologies. And we should update the traditional way of life, uh, way of living to the new one so that we can uh, live happily and solve the big issues in the world. So the, finally, the reason why I came to Singapore is that I like to build a new innovation ecosystem in Asia Pacific. As you know, in Silicon Valley, uh, there are amazing ecosystem for the startups, entrepreneurs, innovators. You know, um, not only the entrepreneurs and also the but educational institutions like the Stanford universities, or there are so many Indian investors and venture capitals in the Sand Hill Road and so on. So uh, all the all, any, all various kind of species species uh, in, in Silicon Valley. So that's why um, e almost every year, amazing uh, new companies, new startup is popping up. So, uh, but as you, as you understand, uh, as you know, um, if we visit the Silicon Valley, there are so many Asian people, right? And from India or China or the Singapore and so on. So, but uh, you know, and also as you know, uh, it, it is obvious that uh, Market, magic market is in Asia, right? So talent is here, right? And market is here. So why don't we duplicate or the create a new ecosystem uh, for the startups and entrepreneurs in Asia? Why we have to go to the uh, Silicon Valley to get a difficult visa from the Mr. Trump, right? So, um, I strongly believe that we can, we can make a new ecosystem in Asia. And of course, we, we like to be the bridge among the ecosystem everywhere in the world. So um, the, you know that Singapore is, uh, Singapore government is very forward thinking. And they, there are very few countries who are uh, advocating that we are the smart nations. So uh, I was so uh, inspired and uh, so encouraged by talking with them 
uh, they like to create a very new uh, 21st century uh, figure of the nation state and the community of the citizens. So um, that's why I moved here and to be a part of the uh, ecosystem and uh, foster the ecosystem in Asia. So uh, as a first step, um, I'd like to be connected to the communities with you guys um, so that we can uh, foster the very good uh, innovative ecosystem so that we can change the world better. Thank you very much.